Hey guys, Kobani here again. I'm starting a new series and I'm going to be ending the old series that I've on my channel. Basically, I've not been doing me making videos for a long time because I had a problem with my microphone and I sent it in for warranty and I just got it back. And I'm also starting this new series because I feel like I went I, I jumped a lot of stuff. A lot of basic stuff in Maya and then people are asking me a lot of questions, which so I'm going back to the basics. I'm going to be starting a new series, which I'm going to call Basic Modeling in Maya. This, I don't know, maybe I'll name, the, I'll name it something different in the future, but for now, this is the name I'm going for. Basically, the purpose of this series is to create basic assets and model them in Maya. I will be going to ZBrush and then adding some details later. But I know not everybody has ZBrush, so that I'm going to make sure I can get as much details I can as much details as I, I can get in Maya then I'll go to ZBrush and then do the other details that I want to do and use Substance Painter for the texturing and stuff for some assets I'll use the I'll do the hammer and the on oh, sorry <laughs> spoiler I'll do the assets and then the UVs if the asset is simple enough but I'm going to start with very basic assets then upgrade as we go on because I want the tutorials to be people learning how to use Maya and making their own stuff but not learning how to do the stuff I'm doing I'm just a basic person just who knows how to use Maya and other 3d modeling softwares trying to help out a little <laughs> so let's start a video so today we are going to be modeling a simple hammer I've already set my project which I recommend you always do create a project window and set it to the project when you're working on that project it helps you it prevents you from losing files and always do incremental saves if you don't know how to set projects or stuff, I would recommend watching some basic Maya tutorials that teach you uh, the first steps in Maya stuff. So, as every asset, like every asset we use, we do, I'm going to start by importing the hammer, which I'm modeling. I'm going to import the image plane basically. So, go. I'm going to go to my front view, which is the most important view for this asset, and go to image plane and import image. I save the image somewhere else, so I'm going to find the image. Usually, you save your images in your source images of the project window you're working on. And I have my stuff on my Google Drive, so I don't lose them. And if I could find it, and I'm going to start with this one. I found this image off of Google. Nothing, it's not mine. I, I'm not on it. So I'm going to shut up now before somebody leaves a comment saying video starts at blah blah blah. That's if somebody even bothers to leave a comment. Huh. Okay, so I'm going to put my image plane back in the perspective view. Go to show and make sure the image plane is back and not forward. If you can see your grid line, then yeah, if it's good. If your image plane is in front of everything, you will not see anything. So make sure it's behind the grid in the front view. I'm going to go to show in my perspective view. And click none, and then click show again, and click polygons. So I'll see all the polygons in this view. So nothing else bothers me. I usually do that for animation, and I turn on the curves. But back to the modeling. If you want to learn how to create shells in Maya, I'm going to do a quick tutorial, real quick, right over here. This is a tutorial. So if people are complaining that I'm talking a lot before getting to the modeling, um, this is a tutorial for stuff in Maya. So um, please be patient. To create a shelf, basically, you create this gear button up here, and you click new shelf, name it whatever you want. Okay, Maya doesn't like when you use a space bar, so you prefer to using the underscore. So, and to add stuff to the shelf, just press Control, Shift, and Hold, and go to whatever tool you need, you want to add, and then just. Add the tools there. I add tools I use a lot so that I don't have to search for them every time. To delete the shelf, basically, thank you. You, have, you click the gear tool again and just delete the shelf. Make sure you have that shelf selected and then delete it. Okay, so I'm going to start this simple asset by shift. Actually, first I'm going to select the image plane. Click this button right here. It adds it to a layer. Double click on the layer, name it image plane. So I know it is the image plane. 
I'm used to Photoshop, so I like working with layers. Save. I'm going to hide it if I need to. But for why the reason I created this image lens, I'm going to click this empty box until it turns R. When it turns R, it means it will be referenced, so I can't mistakenly select it while modeling. Okay, so I'm going to start now. Because nothing is selected, when I shift right click, I get this wheel. Shift right click changes depending on what mode you are in. If you are in vertex mode, it will change. If you are in face mode, it will change. If you are in edge mode, it will change. If you are in object mode, it will change. And if you have nothing selected, this is what pops up. And I'm going to create a, a cube. I'm going to go to shading and turn on x-ray. Pull it down. Actually, no. I'm going to right click select on the layer, select object, and move this up so that it's on the grid. The base of it is on the lower side of the grid. I have my grid colored so it's easier for me to see when I'm animating and stuff. I'm going to deselect the image planes. I'm going to select the cube again, move it here. I'm going to scale the cube out. Basically to the weather side. Vertex, move it back here. Then vertex, select the top vertices. Make sure you are drag selecting so that it selects the vertices in the behind on the back side of it. Uh, pull it up to the highest point, which will be here. And then I'm going to go to the side view and add some thickness to this. Since I don't have a top view or anything for this hammer, I have to decide the thickness myself. And I'm just going to make use my own um, judgment for this one. Usually, um, hammers are rectangular and not perfect squares, so just make sure your hammer is not like a square, it's like re rectangular, if you are following my reference. I'm going to select the object, and I'm going to freeze the transformations by going to modify, freeze transformation. It zeroes out everything and puts the scale to 1, so that everything is like back to default. I'm going to center the pivot, I have on my shelf over here. You can do that by also going to modify, modify and center pivot. Now this is the fun part. I'm going to click my insert edge loop, double click on it, click multiple edge loops and click one, I mean type one. Click on the asset. By the way, when I say asset, I mean the model we are working on. Like I'm used to calling an asset, so sorry about that. After I add my edge loop, I'm going to press Q to make sure I'm not on the insert edge loop tool anymore. Go to face, delete these faces on the other side. And then I'm going to go back to my search edge loop tool and click reset tool. Now I'm going to click and add an edge loop over here. I'm going to go to vertex mode. Select, press Q so that you're not in the insert edge loop tool anymore. Q sends you back to your selecting tool. Drag select the vertices up here and drag select the vertices down here. And press R to go to your scale tool and scale them in to get a shape over here. Now I'm going to select this edge. Oops. These edges right here. I'm going to drag select so it selects the edge back there. Shift, right click. Because we're in edge mode, it changes. And then we can sc scroll down. Or actually, you can click this one, bevel edge. Make sure you are beveling with one segment. And this one works better in the perspective view, so you see what we're doing. Beveling with one segment and then increase the fraction to whatever amounts you need. And this, we are basically trying to get this shape over here. So just click and drag on it. If it's dragging too much for you, press control and middle mouse drag it to drag in smaller increments. And then now that I got a shape, I'm going to go to my front view. I mean, my perspective view. Go to vertex mode. Click on my target to weld tool, which can be found under mesh tools and target to weld or while you're in object mode, you can shift right click to go to target to weld. When you're usually using tools, remember to always make sure to click press Q to move away from them so that you don't mistakenly um, do something to them. I mean, mistakenly like do stuff you don't want to do. Before I use my target to weld, I always click outside to make sure no vertices are selected. And then I click on the vertex I want and I drag and it, just, it snaps and merges automatically. So just click on the vertex and boom. 
I'm going to select these very suits over here. Because in my opinion, I feel like they'll, if if I were the one who created a hammer, I'll make these ones bevel this way too. So there we go. I'm going to add an edge loop. Um, no, actually. Hmm. I'm going to add an edge loop here, actually. Actually, to make sure that it's perfectly in the middle, I'm going to double click on it. Press multiple edges. Type one in here. And then do that and then reset the tool before I leave because I know the next time I need it, maybe I'll need it in the normal form. Select this edge ring. Make sure it went all the way around. Okay, it did. Press arrow to go back to your scaling and scale it down to make it straight. Now go to go to faces. Select these faces over here. Delete. Object mode. Shift, right click. Mirror polygon Y minus. Sorry, wrong direction. I guess it's Y plus. Shift, right click. Mirror polygon again. Y plus. Nope. What the? That's weird. Shift, right click. Mirror polygon Y minus. Hey. Oh, I see. There's a face over here. That's why. Ah. Mirror polygon mirrors on the feathers vertices. That's why I make sure. All the vertices are flat by me scaling in that edge over there. So, because there's a face there, it was mirroring on that face. So, basically, redo again shift, right click, mirror polygon, and then Y minus. And this time, you should do it. I'm, going to, I'm just going to go to vertex mode, select these vertices, move them up to where they're supposed to be. And we got a bevel that we want there. If you want, you can change it and then try and fit. But I know that this hammer is supposed to be um, mirrored on each side because but because of perspective that's why this one looks a little bit smaller maybe that's not how the hammer was created but that's how I want to create mine so I'll create mine like that basically and that basically helps makes us get it on both sides without having to do it again you can delete this edge in the middle because we don't need it I press control delete not just delete if you just delete it will leave the vertices there but control delete makes it remove the vertices too you can also shift, right click, and delete edge and to do it to remove the vertices too. Now, I, I, as I can see, the edge over here is not perfect. It's not a triangle, so I, I, I might have I might have to bevel the vertices over here, or also known as chain fav. So I'm going to shift, right click, and chain fav vertex. I'm going to reduce the width a little. Ah, uh, I don't like that. I don't like that. So I'm going to do this instead then. I'm beveling this edge instead. I'm going to go to this view so I can get it a little bit closer. And it, it's not going to be perfect because so we're going to go to, um, I'm going to go to vertex mode, click my target to weld, and then weld this vertex to this vertex. And then basically, I have to do that on the other side too. I'm going to click and drag and select these vertices, move them forward, move it down here. It's not going to fit perfectly because of um, perspective, as I said multiple times already. So sorry about repeating. And uh, hmm. since we just did that, we have to. You can leave this like this if you want, because it's still a quad. Like this face is still a quad. But um, quads and angles don't matter in uh, a hard surface. I mean, quads and triangles don't matter in a hard surface, especially if you're modeling for game. But if I'm modeling for computer animation, I think it's different. Something, but I'm not going to go into that details right now. I'm just going to stay basic right now. So I'll it's a quad basically has four faces. I mean, four sides. It's a face with four sides. You can leave it like that, or if you if it bugs you out, you can uh, multi cut, which is shift right click, depending on what mode you're in. Object mode, multi cut, shift right click, 
or under mesh tools i think yep the multicast make sure you drag on an edge and then drag to the vertex and make sure it turns yellow it will snap to the vertex and then you just click to where you want it to be but i'm not going to multicast because i need that bevel here so i'm just going to leave it like that but i have to make sure it doesn't make the shape look weird because we, we are going to have to bevel stuff later but um now we can do that from the bottom again but since i'm i deleted that edge about this i'm going to just redo everything the mirroring i did earlier i'm going to scale this one down face mode delete these faces make sure there's no face here object shift right click mirror polygon y minus if your vertices are flat it will merge it will automatically merge over the vertices when it flips that's why you make sure all the vertices are on the same level by scaling them down just going to move this one down here i'm going to leave that edge there in case i need it in the future for something so i'm just going to leave it there and now basically we got the hammer shape before i do anything else i'm going to shift right click scroll down to clean up have faces with more, more than four side check concave faces checked and faces with holes and have these other stuff checked they are more um, complicated stuff but i'm not going to go into details with it right now just click clean up nothing is nothing highlighted oh also sorry about the cleanup tool make sure you have select matching polygons on don't check cleaning clean up matching polygons or maya will try to clean up stuff when there's problems and maya can if maya can clean up it will basically just delete the face and can be like a certain small vertice that you don't want to delete like a small hole somewhere but basically make my highlight the problems and fix it yourself so basically this, these are the settings i use on my cleanup unless i need the other ones i don't select non-planar faces because they are not a big deal depending on the asset so basically i can see that everything is good over here then i'm going to now click object mode i'm um, go to vertex mode and i'm going to select this right here and scale it in just to make sure everything is straight because if you keep on adding edges and stuff something a vertex moves a little so i'm just scaling it to make sure everything is straight shift right click mirror polygon y m to be x minus i think yep x minus vertex mode so i'm going to select all these vertices and move them just a little bit yeah I'm, I'm not going to bother about that right now i'm going to go to um edge mode I'm going to highlight every edge i'm going to control double click this edge double click this edge then shift right click bevel edge i have my depth bevel set defaultly to two that's why it keeps on popping up as two but i'm going to set it to one right now because i need only one for this one click on fraction and then control middle mouse drag to do it in small increments objects mode Okay, I, I'm just looking at it from different angles to make sure everything looks good. I'm going to hide my grid by clicking this button right here. Seems it looks good right now. Turning on back my grid again. And basically, bevel makes it capture the light very nicely. The, I use two um, increments because sometimes it just adds that little line in between that makes it capture the light more sometimes. But it depends on the asset you are working on. For this one, I don't need it. And now that I have everything set, I'm going to add a hole up here for this cylinder. But before I do that, I'm going to create the handle first. So with nothing selected, shift, right click, poly cylinder. I have it defaultly set to eight segments. Just going to change it now to 12. Why am I using 12? Because I just, I'm going to be uh, inserting it into this because I just want it to look better. Because we'll be moving on to ZBrush after this. Well, I'll be moving on to ZBrush for guys, for people who can follow in ZBrush. Sorry about that. I'll also be working in Substance Painter for a texture. So, if push comes to shove, and I'm going to select the very system and just do the same thing now. I'm going to pull these vertices down here. 
And there's one reason I delete that. There's a reason I delete the caps. I'm going to select edge. Control E. Pull up by pressing W. And I'm going to scale this one out. And G to repeat last command and press W again to go to my move tool. I know you can use the translations that are provided by the extrude tool, but I don't like using it because it doesn't have the. It has a certain set to object or component, I think. But the move, to, I have my move tool set to world. It's not a big deal, but that's how I work. So I'm G again. And I press R to go to my scale tool. And then G. Go to W and pull it out. Then I'm going to R, scale it out this way. And G. Let's go to my top view and scale it in a little. And I like to add a little height, even when it's like 100% flat. I like to add a little height to it like this, because it helps with the normal map. Because it gives a little shadow there, and it helps with the normal map, in my opinion. So I'm just going to do this and then G, W again, pull up. And I'm just going to check the size first, make sure it fits a little bit. I'm going to scale it in. Then G, sh um, shift, right click, merge, collapse, merge, edit to center. You can do this if you want your cap to be like this, but if you want quads up here, if one quads up here, instead of doing the last extrude, after scaling in like this, deselect two edges that are across each other. And shift, right click, bridge, and to give it a quad like this. That's if you, are, if you want quads so badly. But I usually work with a quad version because I, I just I think um, ZBrush prefers ZBrush subdivides it easier. It doesn't tell me that um, measures triangles or whatever. But it doesn't matter sometimes. Uh, if you like, you can even go and then manually cut this in. To add more subdivisions because when you go to before you export to ZBrush, it's good to add more um, edges. Like if I export this cylinder to ZBrush and I try and subdivide, it won't subdivide properly. I have to add like random edges in the middle here to make subdivision easier for ZBrush. You select this edge right here and bevel, because nothing in real life is hundred percent um, sharp like that. I'm going to put only one segment. We're going to control middle mount. We'll do the same for here. Oh, whoops. I still on segments. It's supposed to be on fraction. You can do that for here if you want. But actually, I'll do that. Uh, what should I? Yeah, I'll do it. Not sure I know I'm going to leave it like that. We'll going to look at it in object mode. Watch and I need it. Yeah, I need it because it makes it look like it, it's flat over there. Actually, I'm going to select this edge ring, scale it in a little bit, then control. Let me shift right click, bevel, turn the segment to one again, then just do, do this so that it looks like this. If you want it to look like uh, there's a hole in there and then the this comes out of it, then you go and you can select this face, this face ring right here, and control E and pull it down. But actually, no, that's the wrong way. Sorry, I think it's the edge itself. Then you pull it down like that. But usually, if I do that, if I was like, I want the hole to be there, I'll do it during the extrusions. Like when I was extruding the stuff out, I'll extrude down before I extrude back out. But I don't care about a hole being there. To make it look like that, so we're going to leave it like this. And I'm going to do the same for this side because when we we need I, we bevel so that they act as holding edges. You, you can manually add holding edges or you can bevel for holding edges. 
because when you subdivide without holding edges like i'm going to press three mode when there are no holding edges it everything you lose the details and stuff i want to add a holding edge like that's me if i bevel right now make sure everything is clean over right here Now when I press three, it's going to hold that shape over there. I'm just going to do that for the major shape changes that I, I, I need to keep. Okay, I'll do this for I, I can bevel multiple edges, but I like to bevel some edges one by one. Because sometimes when I bevel multiple edges, Maya will want the settings won't work properly if the edges have different um beveling capabilities. See some if one edge won't bevel as much as another. The one that can bevel more won't bevel as much as it can go. Okay, I'm going to bevel this one in with two increments, with two segments. I mean, why just so I can get that little 90 degree, like not, not 90 degree, but just that little angle over there. Like it goes in and then it, can, it holds the edge and it comes out again. So now when I press three, it looks like this. I, I, I can see I need to bevel one more edge. All these things can be done in ZBrush for an easier price. Well, depending on how how you plan on using it ZBrush. I'm going to bevel this one in two segments too. Just control middle click to get it in small increments. And boom, when I press three mode, this is how it's going to look when it gets smooth. So that's how I keep pressing three mode. I mean three to get it to three mode. I might actually had add a hole in this side maybe if I want to. But I'm gonna leave it there for now. Leave it how it is for now. Make sure you're in one mode. Don't work in three mode or the um else it might mess with my you start seeing your screen flickering and stuff. So now I'm gonna add these rings over here. Basically these rings are easy to add. Just go to insert the edge loop tool. Yeah, insert the edge loops where the rings are supposed to be. Oops, I'm gonna just shift select these rings over here by doing this. Now that I have all the rings selected like I want to, control E, come to this view. While thickness is selected, control middle mouse drag out. If thickness doesn't work for you, try local Z. It depends on the assets you are working on, they'll work differently. So you gotta try local Z thickness and offset. Offset usually works differently, so you gotta be careful. So local Z just makes every face move in its local Z's translation. And thickness just does an overall thickness. So because as you can see when I was doing it local Z the trans the translation tool was moving. When thickness it doesn't move. So I'm gonna add the thickness I need. Then command while the faces are still selected. Command right click to edges to edges. I'm going to control deselect the edge rings in the middle. Oh, also, you can just drag select to deselect your edges, which I'll try to recommend you doing more because that will make sure that all the edge rings are deselected. The edge rings in the middle, that is. And so I'm going to shift right click. And bevel the, those edges over there. I'm going to make sure fragment fraction is selected, and then control middle mouse drag left or right to make sure it bevels in small increments. Don't make it too sharp, or else it will be very sharp when you smooth it. So just give it a, a little bleeding room. Then you got that. And now, when you press three, this side to look like. As you can see, three makes that part smooth weirdly. If you want, and you want to separate the rings from the handle itself because of texturing or UVing, you can do this, select this face and then sh the shift double click to select the whole ring and then shift and press your greater than button or the dot and to increase your ring, I mean your face selections and to go to where you want it to be, it will be right here. Then shift, right click, extract faces, objects mode, boom, you got two different objects now. 
and bef because we did it from like we extracted it from this it's perfectly like the shape of the handle itself so when i press three mode here and i press three mode here they fit perfectly together boom we're going to do the same for here basically because um okay i'm going to drag select the faces up here drag these select these ones scroll in to make sure drag and then i'm going to do it right here and shift right click extract faces so now these two like these th these things are different objects now i'm going to drag select everything all these ones actually i'm going to drag everything and then i'm going to press my clean button which is a mail button i created myself basically what it what my dab button does for me is it centers my favorites deletes my history and it freezes my transformations to delete history go to edit delete by type history to center the pivot you go to modify center pivot to freeze transformation modify freeze transformation to create a mail button um, you, know, you can watch other videos on how to create mail buttons and stuff basically use the script editor to create a mail button i don't want to go into details right now and i just realized something it seems that this edge over here beveled when, when it wasn't supposed to i need a bevel because it looked very sharp unlike the other ones huh. so i deselected everything it seems i didn't do that for that edge right there so always one edge man i'm going to press i'm going to select everything and press four i'm going to see if there's any other edge four mode just makes it easier to see through your stuff okay so it seems that it was only that edge that didn't that got selected by mistake so i'm going to just go back into one mode or i mean five mode which is shaded mode i'm going to delete the edge there the edges on the sides i'm going to merge this this edge by doing the using the multi tool then boom that should fix that problem there now it shouldn't be hard when it's smooth okay now that we get everything there's two ways to create a hole over here you can do booleans but if you use booleans you have to know how to clean up booleans so be careful or you could manually create like extrude these edges in i mean these faces in and then create the, um, the uh, add enough edge flow for it for the holes and then create a hole there and stuff but i'm going to use booleans because booleans are easy but you have to know how to fix your assets when you do booleans but and before you do booleans delete history so that there's nothing because booleans can mess up Maya itself so get ready and i'm going to boolean firstly by making sure that these two assets are intersecting so yeah as you can see they're not intersecting so i'm going to make sure they're intersecting over there if you like you can as i said you can choose not to use booleans if you don't feel like you're comfortable with it firstly before i do this method i make sure i duplicate and I put a duplicate on layers by clicking on this right here. So I command D, and while it's, the duplicates are still selected, I click on this button and it puts that duplicate on the layer. Then I press V to hide the duplicates. You don't know that duplicates are hidden right now because they are in the same place as the old ones. I create a duplicate before I boolean in case something goes wrong. And I also save a new increment. Oh, this is my file first save. Wow, that's a bad thing. After I saved already, so file save us again. Okay, and I'm going to delete this edge in the middle because it might actually mess up with the boolean. Okay, I'm going to do this. Shift, select this one. Mesh, booleans, difference. Basically, it creates the edges for me when, you use, when I click on difference. Make sure you select the thing you want to remove technically last 
like the asset that you're cutting into you have to make sure that's the first one you select before i do that i'm going to select face i'm going to delete this face right here uh, you see boolean actually cuts inside and i didn't know so that's why i did that so uh, i'm i'm going to select this face and um uh, i basically just deleted that face right there you guys want me to do it i'm about to repeat myself for some reason i'm going to multi cut by clicking on this and drag and clicking and then connecting this to here Boolean try and connect those the whoops I didn't the hell there we go that was weird now usually like this is the high res so it doesn't matter but usually you won't see people like adding these details to the game asset to the game res itself but as I said game res Yeah, all these stuff are accomplished with no um, are added to the final product with normal maps and stuff. But for guys who don't know about normal maps, please don't worry about it right now because I'll not be creating a normal map in this map in this for this asset in this video basically. Oh, wait, actually, that's already connected. Okay, I'm going to click on this edge and control delete. Whoops, yeah, <laughs> boolean starts messing up. Don't just shift delete right there. See, sometimes Boolean just makes the assets do the wrong thing. It makes tools not work sometimes. That's one reason people like oh hate Booleans. See right there. So okay, seems that so you gotta be careful when you're using Booleans. That's why I duplicate and save. Okay, I'm just gonna do this the hard way again. I'm going to add edges before I delete any edge. So make sure everything has an holding edge. I'm going to select this edge. I'm going to just delete it. I hope nothing goes wrong. Yeah, okay, nothing went wrong. I'm going to select this face ring right here. Whoops. And then just delete it. Seems that I messes up something. Why it messes up stuff? I don't know. Okay, there we go. See, I just deleted again and it didn't mess up anything. I'm just going to select this and delete the history so that Maya forgets that I bullied this. Basically. Then now, hopefully, this uh, nothing should mess up now. So, I'm going to bring back this. And remember that we have it. We have a duplicate, so it has the other assets inside there. But I don't need it right now, so I'm just going to select this right here. This ring right here. Scale it out very slightly. And Control E, scale it in, pull it down, and then. Control D select to deselect this one too, and then shift right click bridge. What the? Oh, it wasn't opposing faces, I mean opposing edges. I'm going to deselect this one instead. Shift right click bridge. There we go. Okay, and now when I bring in the. I'm going to control. While this is selected, I'm going to control H to hide it. Bring in the old ones select this one you can delete this one if you followed my path but i'm not going to delete it because i don't like deleting stuff so basically i'm just going to hide it and then shift control h to bring back the thing that i just hit i mean the old one that i hit initially it seems i didn't scale this one out far enough because i want it to look like there's a like this handle actually goes inside something I'm going to select this edge ring. Shift right click bevel, one segment. Now when I press three, uh, seems it goes, it still goes in. Okay, Alt H. Select this edge ring. It can't, it won't select the edge ring properly because of the way we did it. Okay, so we have to just go in. Pull these ones down a little bit more, then bevel them. Usually, people won't care about the inside face since they, don't, they won't be seen. But I just I do that because of ZBrush. Because when there's nothing in the ZBrush, it makes that side transparent, especially when you um, separate the, them into groups and stuff. But okay, now Shift Control H, and when I bring everything back, everything should look good. I press three mode. Oh. 
it does look that like the handle is entering something right so i'm just going to add a little bit more i mean it's whoops i'm going to add a little bit more space so that it looks a little bit more like it's actually entering something okay um, let's go away from out a little bit because three mode um, i mean smoothing makes stuff lose a little weight that's why i like, go back into three mode to make sure everything is looking good push three for this one. Oh, see this one looks a little weight i think that's good just going to scale them in a little because i just remember that that one also loses weight so just a little bit this is all the creative lines here basically this hammer could have been done with faster but i just wanted to show you guys more tools you can use when you are working on your own stuff for weapons and stuff if you're creating a sword don't make a sword like just one edge holding the blade because a blade is actually not very thin it, it, actually, actually, it actually has a little space in there so like a bevel basically so basically we, we have this hammer there right here now you can add this detail like the leather that is hanging over there but sadly this reference doesn't show me how the leather is hung like where where the, hell the leather hangs from like because usually there's a ring up here or something that the leather is hanging from so i'm going to leave that leather out of this video right now now that i have everything done i'm going to select everything clean up delete history this is where you start cleaning stuff up go to outline now press command g while everything is still selected and press clean up my clean up again which is basically delete history center pivot with um, freeze transformations you can just put them on your shelf and click them individually this is my center pivot and delete history if i want to do it one by one and when i press command g it groups everything i'm going to select this group and i'm going to name a hammer and i'm going to delete this right here because that comes from me like extracting faces and stuff and i'm going to name my stuff hammer i'm going to name my parts so that it's easier to identify them when i move it to a new so i mean a, a new 3d software mm, i'm sorry i forgot i think i forgot how to do the um multi-naming i think this i think is how you do it right nope i'm not like this there's a way to multi-name everything like to make everything ring one ring two without because if you name something before you duplicate it basically names it with one two three four five but i forgot to do it more. well I'll, I'll name my stuff later okay so basically i'll i'll do this and like i'll save everything in groups and i'll send it to zbrush okay now that everything is grouped and set I'm going to send it to ZBrush. Usually, I'll fix these triangles before I send it to ZBrush. But I recently learned a trick to basically use ZBrush's ZRemesher to, tool to help you um, retopologize your assets when you're done. And Z, ZBrush, ZBrush is a very good tool. I recommend people try at least try and learn to use it, even though you don't have it. Like just watch videos and get used to the tool a little bit from just watching other people before you actually get it because it's a very industry industry standard tool for film or games or advertising and everything so just try and get yourself out there for right now so this will be my my hammer i'm going to press three for everything and it's very soft right now if i wanted to make it harder i would have made a three bevel a three edge bevel instead of a two edge bevel Basically, I mean, I would have used three segments instead of two segments. I mean, three segments of one segment, which would have added that edge in the middle to hold the edges. Like, to add this edge right here. So when I, uh, I press three, you see that this one is sharper than the other ones. That's what would have happened if I beveled the other way. But I'm going to ZBrush and I'm going to add damages to those edges, like these edges right here. That's why I wanted them to be a little bit smooth. So basically for guys who are, who are following me in Maya, this is the end of it, I guess. And if you want to add extra details to your hammer and stuff, 
in Maya just use edges like add edges and then extrude uh, stuff this video is long already so um, thanks for watching and uh, see you later hopefully in ZBrush and have a nice day guys